What is going on guys? Today we're starting the next step of working on my 1987 Mazda RX-7. We're currently working on getting this old girl running again, but that means that we have to do a lot of wiring. Now just about the most important part of our wiring is right here usually in RX-7s, it's our battery. Now if we look at the placement of it, it is pretty much front and center in a very, very visible part of the engine bay. And I'm sure by now you guys know the excessive lengths that I'm going to make sure that this engine bay isn't too cluttered. So this battery location is just not gonna cut it. But if we're not gonna put our battery in the engine bay, then where are we gonna put it? There's one very cool feature on the FC RX-7 that gives us a perfect spot to put the battery. If we look right behind the seat, We've got two little bins, two little storage bins, and they're actually quite large. Like you could fit like a good amount of stuff back here. But I think what I'm gonna end up doing is mounting my battery and main fuse box right in here. That'll put the battery in a spot that's not ever gonna be visible to anybody other than myself and it'll still be super easy to service. Unfortunately, this old Duralast is just not gonna cut it. As you guys can see, this is just your run of the mill lead acid battery, which means that this is full of a bunch of lead plates and acid that creates a chemical reaction that creates voltage. Now the issue is that that same chemical reaction puts out toxic vapors that we don't wanna be breathing in inside of the cabin of the car. And that is where this old girl comes in. This is my brand new anti-gravity ATX 30. This is probably one of the coolest batteries that I've ever bought. As you guys can see, it is very small, but not only is its size extremely impressive, it also weighs nothing. As the name suggests, this thing is five pounds. As you guys can see, I'm holding this thing up with one hand. This is literally a five pound battery for my car, which means that we're gonna be stripping probably 35 pounds from the weight of the car just by replacing the battery with this. Now the anti-gravity is a lithium ion battery, which means it's a lot more advanced than our normal lead acid batteries. And for that reason, we can have the same amount of power, actually quite a bit more. You guys can see it's got 880 cold cranking amps. Out of a battery that's a lot smaller and weighs so much less. Now this does have a bit less reserve capacity, but also this isn't really going to be an electronics heavy car. This is basically just a driver's car. So we won't really have to worry about that. Plus this also comes with the restart feature, which means that if this does ever go dead, it will automatically turn itself off before it reaches a state where the capacity is too low to start the car. Now we can go ahead and click this button and that activates the battery again, and that gets us power enough for at least one start. So basically our battery's never gonna go dead again. So now that we've figured out what we're gonna be using to power this car, we gotta figure out how we're gonna mount it. To do that, I think I'm gonna have to pull this bin. Uh, it looks like just a bunch of Phillips head screws, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off and get this thing out of there. So as you guys can see, in its place, we have pretty much the place where a back seat would go in the 2x2 version of this, but we don't have that. The nice thing is that we do have a few bolt holes in here that we can use as uh, mounts for a little battery tray. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what kind of battery tray I could build for this and uh, get that ATX 30 mounted in here. All right, so it's a few minutes later, and as you guys can see, I've got this little piece of cardboard here that is acting as my mount for my battery. Um, I'm gonna be bolting into the stock seat belt mounts right here and right there. And it's just gonna be a bar that's just gonna go straight across, bolt into those two. I'm also thinking about bracing to this front piece right here, having a little strap that goes over here and we'll probably rib nut that in possibly tying into those two bolt holes but i'm not sure yet at this point i'm liking where this is at and i think i'm gonna go ahead and draw this up in cad so that i can get this made out of some metal okay we are back at the home base i've just finished designing my battery mount so i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a tour of what i got going on all right so starting out with this entire thing we've got our main battery mount this thing is made out of sheet aluminum this is pretty much what you guys saw me designing at the shop We've got one mounting tab, two mounting tabs, and three mounting tabs that are all three gonna have bolts into the car. Then we have a big space right here that's actually for our battery mount. Now I can go ahead and activate the battery tray. And this is gonna be a 3D printed part that basically will house our ATX 30. And right on the side of it, we're gonna have a circuit breaker to make sure that we have good circuit protection if anything does go wrong. So that is pretty much how it's gonna sit in the car, but we need some way to strap it down. So I've come up with a little bit of a hold down that's just gonna be another piece of sheet aluminum bent up 
and that's going to bolt down to the mount itself. So this is going to be our completed version of basically what's going to be holding my battery into the RX-7 and I think it looks very good. We still have a space right up top which will be perfect for us to be able to hit the restart button if we ever need to. But it's going to be nice hidden and you won't really be able to see a thing and we'll have space if we want to mount a fuse box in here or anything else like that. So this is basically going to be what we have to make. Now we got to figure out how we're going to make this. So the thing that kind of sucks about this is that a lot of these bends have to be pretty precise and they have to be pretty sharp. As you can see, most of these are pretty close to 90 or a little bit more or a little bit less than 90. So on Fusion 360, I can go ahead and uh, make a flat pattern of that specifically and I can actually print this out so that it'll be perfectly to scale so that I can just transfer that to my piece of aluminum, cut that, and mark all my lines where it needs to be bent. But that kind of presents an issue because I have no way of cleanly bending any of this stuff. So I've got to come up with a little bit of a solution. I think that it's going to involve me making a quick little dirty press break and seeing if that's going to be good enough to bend all of these shapes. Hopefully we can get that done. So let's get back to the shop and let's see if we can do it. All right, so I'm starting out by basically just marking up my angle iron. This is just cheap, just angle iron from Home Depot. Um, putting it into the saw, getting it all cut down to size. I've got my gate set so that I can only cut it at the right length every single time. You can see it's a cold cut saw, super nice to have. So these are all the finished pieces. This is gonna be put together to become my press break. As you guys can see, that's gonna give me the base to press into that I can actually like have the metal go into there so it can bend to whatever angle I want. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all the edges. Of course, we're gonna be welding this thing together so we gotta make sure all of our steel is nice and clean. A little bit of work with the angle grinder and a nice little flap disc. We'll get that done nice and quick. So now we're starting the welding. I'm using my uh, Everlast TIG 200 uh, welder to get these things tacked up at first and then I'm gonna go run a nice little bead along the center of them. I'm still super new to TIG welding so like this thing, I mean it didn't come out bad but obviously the welds aren't anything special. But for my first time really welding any like mild steel part that needs to be strong, it came out well. Yeah, I'm using the FUPA 12 cup from Furic on my torch. It gives me a good amount of argon coverage so that I don't have to like, you know, get too much oxidation on it. I do think I'm a little hot for this, but I'm not quite sure. So we'll just speed through the rest of the welds. I'm gonna weld some, uh, some metal rod onto the sides of it just to kind of extend the amount that I'm able to bend. Basically, this is gonna give me the ability to bend past 90, a little bit, a little bit smaller um, degree bend, so that'll be nice. Right, so I got the entire brake press completely finished. It's all completely welded and everything. You guys can see this is it sitting there in the press. This part will just bolt onto that little guy and just be pressed down into our piece of metal, hopefully bending it. So at this point, I'm ready to start cutting the pattern out for our piece of aluminum for the battery hold down. As you guys can see, I've already got the whole pattern laid out on this sheet of aluminum. I'm just gonna go ahead and lop this off with the grinder and then we'll use probably the bandsaw to cut the rest of the details and then we'll get to bending. Hopefully this works. All right, so I've got my piece of aluminum pretty much rough cut at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this thing in the bender to try to make sure that I can get those bends looking nice. And then we will be doing some finish work to it and getting it ready to put in the car. So well. 
<laughs> Perfect 90. Nice. All right, so as you guys can see, we've got our little tray inside of there. It's all bolted up. I gotta go ahead and bend this last piece of it. So I'm just gonna get a quick measurement so I can make sure my bends are on point and then she'll be ready to go. All right, boys, so we've got our mount completely bent up. You can see that guy's nice and uh, sturdy. We've got to drill a hole out here and I'm gonna go ahead and use a, probably a riv nut to secure that bottom one. But the two sides, I've got one secured here to that seatbelt mount, one bolted there to that seatbelt mount. And then with that bolt, we should be nice and sturdy, as you guys can see. Battery won't really move in there. Um, I do have, you know, like a clamp hold down that I'm gonna be using for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this baby up and then we can get to just making it look better, probably rounding off a bunch of these corners and doing the finishing work and then painting it and then it'll be ready to go on the car. So we got our hole drilled. So now we can go ahead and insert our little M8 nut cert into there. That guy's just gonna slide on in there and we'll use the tool to suck that in and get that installed all the way. Perfect, nice threaded hole. It lines up exactly with our hole in our mount. So this is all completely done. I can bolt this down and we'll uh, be on our way. Let's see what it looks like. She is all bolted down. Let's get a light in here. She's sturdy. I can sit there and put pretty much all my weight on it. And of course, the weight of the battery doesn't do anything. So we've got these two little flaps that's gonna be where the battery mounts down to. Of course, the battery's gonna be in a little tray, just like this, right about there. And it's gonna be looking nice and sweet. That is our complete battery setup. I'm gonna save cleaning this up for another day but I think we gotta get them out done. All right, so I went ahead and removed the bottom of the bin just so that I could see what it looks like in the car with the battery in it. And oh my God, that looks so good. Look at that. It is so pro. So that is uh, basically the way that it's gonna be mounted in the car. I still have to come up with the fuse box and all the rest of the stuff that's gonna go in there, but that's all pretty easy stuff. I think I'm gonna go ahead and final print the battery box and fuse box for that once I'm done, and then this will be completely sealed. I'll cut little slits in this so that we'll be able to retain the carpet, of course, and keep a nice, somewhat OEM look, but that looks amazing. So I think that's gonna draw an end to our time at the shop for today. So we gotta get them out done on the RX-7. I'm super stoked about it. We are one step closer to getting this thing running. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one.